the beautiful forest of the sundari mangrove the sundarban delta is a rich and fertile basin of flora growing in areas with low oxygen soil where slow flowing water allows fine sediments to accumulate and the local fauna has adapted well to its vibrant physical chemical factors covering india and bangladesh this highly active zone supports a diverse gene pool of micro and microbiotic groups an ecosystem dominated by mangrove vegetation occupying a special status as critically endangered covering a vast landmass of approximately 40000 square kilometers of active delta region of which 10000 square kilometers is the sundarban or forest deltoid flood plains across bangladesh and india the sundarban region is perhaps the largest unbroken mass of mangrove ecology remaining in the world The unique ecosystem is a precarious balance between the freshwater courses of the tributaries and distributaries of the Ganga Brahmaputra riverine system and saline waters of the Bay of Bengal. With massive quantities of decomposing leaves, twigs and roots combined with organic matter from outflowing rivers and incoming tides to anchor a nutritious food web for terrestrial and aquatic beings as well as for humans over 60 species of mangroves spread through the 10000 square kilometers of the sundarban forest across bangladesh and india this is also home to the nearly extinct saltwater crocodile, the northern river terrapin, and the mangrove horseshoe crab, as well as the protected freshwater dolphins and the Bengal tiger, which is considered by the local folk as the protector of this morphophysiological intertidal area. This ruthless and exotic archipelago of islands in the Bay of Bengal, situated south of the Tropic of Cancer, is humid and dangerous. There are perhaps more trees in the Sundarban than there are thorns in all of the deserts. Nonetheless, from October to February, the rivers are calm and free from turmoil, unlike the summer months where temperatures soar up to 37 degrees Celsius with approximately 82% humidity, more or less throughout the year with 200 meters of coast disappearing in a single year, according to a report by scientists from the Zoological Society of London. The challenge is for man to adapt and survive alongside this highly endangered terrestrial and aquatic ecology. The supply of clean drinking water is limited despite digging pukurs or ponds to harvest rainwater for agriculture, fishing and household works. As the soil is naturally brackish, water inclines to be saline, nonetheless the aftertaste is sweet. Many animals are extinct here now because of resources being utilized for humans for domestic and commercial use, putting the Sundarban mangrove under extreme threat. For the first time in 1879, an area of 4,690 square kilometers was declared as protected forests which were subsequently declared as reserved forests in 1928 and 1943. 
Between 1873 and 1968, the mangrove covered area decreased to about half its original size on account of conversion of forest to agricultural land and settlements. The mangrove forest boundary shifted further to the south and the mangroves were cleared between the Hooghly River and the Matla River. After independence, the population of the Indian Sundarban grew from 1.15 million in 1951 to a staggering 4.44 million in 2011, which led to a growing demand for its resources, putting enormous pressure on the fragile ecosystem to provide timber, fish, honey and medicine from the mangroves. Today, the erosion rate is significantly higher than in the last century. Small-scale loss and gain has occurred due to erosion and accretion of sediments within the tidal channels. New islands have developed alongside the Hooghly River on the western side, while land has eroded on the eastern side of the Indian Sundarban. Currently, however, erosion rates are much higher than aggradation, which is most likely the result of artificial sediment traps upstream due to dams and barrages in particular areas and higher discharge through water diversion in other parts of the drainage basin. Sea level rise is a major cause for recent land loss along the coastline. that has serious consequences on the well-being of the mangrove jungles in the Sundarban. Not only has the reduced fresh water supply led to higher river water salinity, but also the aquatic subsystem has threateningly changed, resulting in a sharp decline in the commercially important fish in the central zones of the Sundarban. Due to hydrological modifications with altered flooding and soil salinity conditions, changes in plant life can be assumed, which in turn impacts the all-inclusive food chain inside the Sundarban mangrove forests. The two most serious anthropogenic impacts on the forest are the wastewater pollution from large cities and industry and a reduction in freshwater supply owing to the construction of upstream embankments for diversion of clean drinking water and irrigation. Large-scale destruction in mangrove structure as well as coastline is caused by occasional cyclonic developments as well. For example, on the 25th of May 2009, a tropical cyclone, Isla, hit the Sundarban in India and Bangladesh with wind speeds going up to as high as 110 km an hour. The surrounding areas of the Sundarban mangroves, both in India and Bangladesh, are some of the most densely populated areas of the world. More than half of the population is underprivileged on the Indian side and depend heavily on the goods and services that the forests provide. Mangrove trees are used for medicine, timber and construction material for houses, boats, traps etc. as well as for fuel and charcoal production. Apiculture is widespread within the Sundarban mangrove forests and provides honey and wax. Around 2,000 people are engaged in beekeeping in the Indian Sundarbans, producing approximately 90% of the total natural honey production in India. While crabs, mollusks, shrimp and fish are caught in the bay as well as the brackish waters surrounding the mangrove forests, the mangrove proper is the most important source for shrimp larvae supply to the aquacultures. In addition, the mangroves are the nurseries for many commercially important fish species. In 1658, Mughal prince Shah Shuja for the first time treated the forests of Sundarban as a source of revenue. Later, 
In 1737, the lands of 24 Parganas was ceded to the East India Company and became the Jagir of Lord Clive. During this time, there was continuous reclamation of mangroves for settlement and agriculture. As Amitabh Ghosh writes in his novel, The Hungry Tide, more tribals were brought in from neighbouring states of Jharkhand, Odisha, Bihar and Bengal by a wealthy Scotsman named Daniel Hamilton. His idealistic concepts of development of rural Gosaba were inspired by the Scottish cooperative movement of the late 18th century Britain. <laughs> People from as far as Rajasthan have been observed living here. Listening to music, the local artists play every evening in Satjelia village as well as in temples. One can experience this cultural exchange here every day. The mysterious, enigmatic and ever-changing mangrove delta of the Sundarban is a dense, shifting and copious network of exposed roots and creeks with a practical vision of only a few inches to a couple of meters. Branches hang over water inlets and alongside main river banks, making it extremely challenging and nearly impossible to get a decent vision of one's surroundings in the land of the great swimming cat, the Bengal tiger. The desert is hostile and the mangrove delta of the Sundari tree unsympathetic. We see in the eyes of the Adivasi of the Sundarban fortitude and the will to survive. despite not just the harsh conditions, but also the fear of the Bengal tiger. In the words of several local village people, they attack man in daylight. Fishermen, honey collectors, timber collectors all alike. The women are more prone to attacks from crocodiles and poisonous creatures while collecting shrimp and prawns in shallow waters or during low tide. We don't take the name of the tiger because he may just appear. Instead, we, both Muslim and Hindu, worship goddess Shakti or Bono Bibi. She is the mother of the forest who saves us from the bag or tiger. और गाले ढूँगे दीजिए, दीजिए तो अपन सब लोग लोग जो नशे के से, सेक्रम में लोग ऐसे और तो अपन पढ़ाबड़ी कोच से, तो अपन ये पढ़ाबड़ी करी और बहुत ही के से, बात तो फोर पढ़ी के से आमी पढ़ी के से, पुरे हमारे पीछे ना टा गाँच चिलो, गाँच हलान दिए, और तो अपन वो आमा दी हाँ करा से, तो अपन आमी और ग and the tigers of the Sundarban have adapted and evolved to thrive here so well that they are even able to drink the salty water from the rivers and creeks. Despite the 96 kilometers of nylon fencing dividing the forest and villages to keep the tiger in and man out, several times a week the forest department goes and manually patches breaches caused by tidal activities and man-made openings. Tourism is a boon to the Sundarban as a fresh stream of income. 
However, wildlife watching tourism is adding a tremendous amount of pressure on the entire ecosystem. There are over 60 diesel-powered boats going on safaris during the peak season, that is from November to February, making the tiger more aware of his closeness to man and thus more intrepid. The forest department, with the help of the locals, keeps tabs on the wildlife of this unique intertidal deltoid by reporting any suspicious activities and broken fence lines and spreading awareness about the importance of preserving the largest mangrove in the world, the Sundarban.